Hey guys, Eric with Blue Line Fishing. Welcome back to the channel. Your time's important to me as always. And what we're gonna do in today's time is, we're gonna take a look at this Revalo 226 Cayman center console boat. Stick around, I think you're gonna enjoy it. Okay guys, let's jump into this. And before we jump into this, one thing I wanna say right out of the gate, this is not my boat. If you guys watch the channel, familiar with the channel, um, Scott, my best friend who I fish with and run around with outdoors and everything else in between, this is his boat. Um, you know, he lived in Southern Indiana, just like I do, has moved down here to the Gulf Coast, got rid of the tracker. If you guys have seen the video for that, if not, I'll leave a link down in the description on that. Um, he had the tracker before, and this is the Rabalo. This is the inshore, nearshore boat that he's bought uh, to be able to use down here on the Gulf Coast. Uh, I'll start out by saying this is a 2016, um, and I'll give you kind of the juicy stats on it. As far as the length goes, it is 22 feet, six inches. The beam on it is eight foot, six inches. Uh, as far as the dead rise goes, we looked that up. We did a little research on it because can't really find the 2016 dead rise uh, information, but on the 2020 and such, it's, it's 15 degrees. So if you like those geeky stats, uh, there's the info on that. And with that being said, we're gonna start taking a look at the boat itself. Okay guys, we're gonna start up here on the bow of the boat. And the first thing we'll talk about is the trolling motor system that's on this boat. So this is a Minn Kota Riptide Tarova trolling motor. It is a 60 inch shaft, 36 volt system with 112 pounds of thrust. It is an iPilot system uh, controlled with a remote and this is what's going to power up here on the front end i can tell you we used it the other day when we had it out um, and it's more than enough for this boat did a really really good job and one other thing i'll mention about the trolling motor on this this is a quick detach system on this so it can be taken off if you're worried about theft in the area you live in or you just want to take it off for storage or when you winterize it so you're just going to take this cotter pin out i just slid out right here both hands on this bar run it out and now you can remove the entire trolling motor. Very, very easy to take off, store, and then put back on for a day of fishing. Okay, so the stern of the boat here, we'll go with the power system here. Obviously the Yamaha four stroke, 200 horsepower engine on that. It has a 10 foot power pole blade on it. We used this the other day in the intercoastal waterway and to fish under one of the bridges there for some sheep's head. I can tell you the current was ripping and this thing did a great job. But anyway, 10 foot power pole, when we get inside the the, the boat here in a minute do the interior um, I'll show you it's, it's got a uh, console uh, button for it to be able to deploy the power pole and it also has a remote as well okay guys so on the port side of the boat we had the uh, the power pole on the starboard side over here we have the swim ladder so this hatch is just going to lift up and then the swim ladder comes out and it easily deploys out for for swimming or if you're like Scott and I and somebody maybe falls out of the boat you need to get back in easy system to be able to get back in the boat uh, really without any help so all the way around the boat from the bow to midship to the stern here there are six cleats uh, that retract and you guys know uh, if you've got cleats on your boat or if you've ever dealt with them especially when it comes to a fishing boat it's nice to have these retractable cleats because they don't get those fishing lines caught around them um, and even if you're standing up here on the stern or on the bow there's not the tendency to catch anything on them like clothing trip hazard anything like that not that you're really going to have a trip hazard on the side of the boat but, but the biggest thing is is getting them out of the way for the fishing lines okay guys interior of the boat what everybody really wants to see a lot of times kind of the nuts and bolts meat and potatoes of the operation here um, we'll start here at the stern work our way to the bow first thing has dual and i'll show you the other one too this is the this right here is the port size live well 30 gallon has an interior light and i'll try and get back out here this evening and film at night to show you guys that so it's got a 30 here on the uh, on the port side and if you come over here to the starboard side once again uh, another 30 gallon uh, live well bait well whatever you want to call it uh, really going to be a bait well on, on this vessel here once again led light in there uh, so you can see if you're low light conditions nighttime fishing things of that nature and then the part of the deck here that you can stand on also folds upward and becomes a small two-person bench seat um, they say that the best ride in the boat is, is on this seat right here um, our wives were out here with us yesterday when we took it for a ride 
and uh, it was a little choppy, a little bumpy out, but it wasn't too bad. But uh, that's just where they sit most of the day and enjoy the ride out there in the Gulf for the most part, I think. So one more compartment here on the back side. Uh, lift this up, holds a five gallon bucket securely. You can keep whatever you want in it. Right now, Scott has some tools in it. He's got his uh, dock ropes and such, but you could also put a cast net in it. It's just whatever fits your needs, but it per perfectly fits that five gallon bucket. So it's nice and snug and secure in there uh, when you're on a run. All right, guys, I popped the hatch open underneath this dual bench seat that's at the stern of the boat just to give you guys a look in here. Um, obviously, you have the power system for the blade power pole, and then you have your onboard battery charger, uh, two battery system back here, interstate batteries, and uh, just the whole um, shoot and match basically of the build system over there as well. So hard top of the boat up here uh, has four rocket launchers or rod holders that are up and out of your way. And then we come down here, there are five more uh, on the back of the seat here. And once again, it has the handrail here. And this is for your passengers back here. If you just got some pitch and roll going on, it's got somewhere you can get a grip. Not that you can't get a grip up here on the hard top, but it's just a little more area to be able to do that. Okay, so we talked about the rocket launchers here, the rod holders. Now, as far as the seat goes, it has these bolster seats, which obviously um, you can sit up against them like a leaner seat, and you can see my feet down here. It's got a little bit of an area where you can kind of lock your feet in, especially if you're in for a rough ride, as well as a footrest that will fold down. And then these bolster seats both come down as well to be a full-size seat um, if you want to have a little bit more of a relaxed ride and you're not worried about standing up and trying to see over the bow the entire time. Okay guys, so now we're gonna talk about the helm here. Uh, first part right down here, just have the your power right here. Power goes on by turning this just one click over to the right or clockwise. Talked about the little footrest down here. As you come up on the console, obviously all your controls uh, for the captain here. This does have the original seven inch um, Garmin. It's got a chart plotter and down imaging. And earlier I was talking about the control for the power pole just simple up and down here as far as the dash control goes and it also has uh, that remote system for it as well so here at midship guys uh, actually this opens up behind this seat right here there's area down here this is actually a head uh, Scott doesn't have an in here right now but it does have a porta potty that way you have that uh, somewhere to be able to use the restroom without hanging everything over the side while you're out at sea and uh, you can also use it for storage yesterday we had it out we used it for storage we had uh, some stuff we wanted to stay dry down there and we also had just some extra gear down there as well so right here we have a Minn Kota battery charger and then this is all midship just like we were showing you a second ago three more interstate batteries and then on the starboard side here we have a Minn Kota alternator so this is all down in the head area or whatever you wanted to use it for um, of the midship part of the boat okay guys bow with the boat here so we have, on, I'll show you inside of these, on both sides, uh, port and starboard, we have these rod locker boxes. And as you can see in this one, uh, Scott's got his cutting board, some life jackets, and just other stuff like that. Um, we'll shut this one here on this side. This one, like yesterday, we actually did use it um, for rod storage. It'll hold, you can see it's got the sleeves where it'll hold six rods. It's, it's honestly a pretty tight fit for that. Uh, something that would make it easier to get your rods in and out is put them in a rod sock first, but um, it will hold six rods. We had five in there yesterday, a little bit of finagling, no problem at all getting it in and out, and then uh, got more dock ropes and things like that. And here you could use it for any kind of storage you want though, but nice big storage um, on those hatches. And then right here, another bait well, live well, whatever you like to call it. Uh, right here, this is a 20 gallon one up on the bow of the boat. And of course it has the hose for clean off or whatever you might need uh, some water for when you're out there for a day of fishing or on the water. Last hatch that's up here on the bow at the very front of the bow, it is where you can store your anchor. As you can see in here, uh, got the anchor and rope in there, easily access accessible uh, via this small hatch right here. So that's a walkthrough here of this 2016 Rabalo 226 Cayman. Um, I'll say this, since I've been down here, I've been staying with, with Scott for about a week and we, we've gotten the boat out some. We've had some kind of bad weather this week. It's the end of November, getting ready to go in December here. So you know how that time of year is, you just weather is hit and miss. We wanted to get the boat out more. We've had it out twice. Uh, we got out in the Intercoastal Waterway and we also got out uh, on Mobile Bay a little bit. Yesterday we were able to get out into the Gulf a little bit. 
Um, I will say, this is my personal experience, I've been going out um, saltwater fishing uh, multiple times a year since I was a real little kid for probably 40 plus years now. I've been going out and I've been blessed enough to be able to go out on the big offshore yacht type boats and fish, center consoles, bay boats, skiffs, um, a lot of different boats with a lot of different rides and a lot of different styles of fishing out of them. Um, we didn't, like I say, get to fish as much as a, we wanted to this week out of it, but I will say the ride yesterday um, was, I, I thought, excellent. I think the fishability of this boat is really, really good. Uh, it's got plenty of room, um, even with rods in the rod lock or the ro rocket launchers it midship there. Um, a, a guy like me, and I'm a bigger guy, I, I'm over six foot two, uh, can move around and not get cluttered up on the boat. So I've been really impressed with the ride uh, and the way it fished uh, this past week. I hope you guys enjoyed the look at this boat. I'm going to try and get back after this evening and show you some nighttime shots of, of the lighting system on it, uh, both interior and exterior, and uh, maybe a little bit of ride footage as well. All right, guys, I don't know how well you can see this, but these are the courtesy lights on the boat. And I'll do a little walk around the helm here uh, from the stern to the bow. You can kind of see them here, these blue lights. Just enough to see where you're walking, where you're going. Night, uh, pre-dawn, right after sunset and such. But courtesy lights on the boat here. And then we're going to go through uh, the other set of lights that's got on as well. Okay, guys, these are the hard top lights. So it's a set of each one. Maybe kind of hard to see in this uh, footage right here, but it's going to be a set of four LEDs on each side. Two different, uh, two different packs of them. They're like a small LED wall pack lights and then one right here there's a couple burned out there but it's still super bright enough to see uh, what you're doing you can see up here on the uh, bow of the boat and then go back here to the stern as well and these two they light everything up really really nice to be able to see rig up rods your terminal tackle things like that just whatever you're doing at night uh, or once again low light conditions and the last set of lights here guys is the uh, bait well lights on each side that's the starboard side port side here uh, lit up and once again um, really easy to be able to get in there get what you need to get see what you're doing but yet not uh, not overly bright where you, uh, you basically see spots for the next five minutes because the lights are too bright so that nice blue hue on it there um, like I say great job on those okay that is the walkthrough on this Robalo 226 Cayman I hope you guys enjoyed it if you did please consider subscribing to the channel I'll also leave some discount codes for you guys for different products down in the description and I'll leave some other links down there one link I'm gonna leave is for um, coastal marine sales it's where this boat came from uh, Scott's had really good customer service with them I don't have any affiliation with them no uh, links at all but I wanted to give a shout out to them because he said he's had great customer service and a lot of help getting this boat together to be seaworthy. Once again, thanks for watching. I really appreciate it. And remember, until that next video, get out there and fish.